Welcome, Welcome to, to Western, Western Trading, Trading Post. Post. Hello everybody, I am Jim Olson. And I am Bobby Jean Olson. Today, we would like to talk about Spurs. No, not those tall guys from San Antonio that play basketball, but real cowboy Spurs. So, are they tools of communication to be used between a horse and a rider? Are they cowboy or cowgirl bling to be collected and hung on a wall? Or perhaps instruments of torture? <laughs> Depending on who you talk to and how they are used, it could be all three. So I feel like the history and lineage of Spurs is an important place to start, and it looks a bit like this. People have been using Spurs just about as long as they've been riding. We know there are examples dating back as far as the Celts and the Romans. European horsemen were using them widely by the Middle Ages in pretty much every horse culture who also had knowledge of forging metal has been using them ever since. They first came across the Atlantic Ocean into the North American continent in a couple of ways. One, with the British who brought them to the northeastern part of what is now the United States. And two, with the Spaniards who brought them to New Spain, or what is now Mexico. As the Spaniards moved northward, they left behind herdsmen to tend to stock and to settle the area of what is now northern Mexico and the American Southwest. Over time, these folks transitioned into what eventually became known as the Mexican Vaqueros. These descendants of those early settlers are who were found tending to livestock when the first Americans came along and started learning how to ranch on the open ranges of the Southwest. The Spanish style spur the Vaqueros were wearing was a much larger and ornate affair than those used by other Europeans at the time, and the lineage of today's Western style spur follows more closely with this version. And history tells us that the Vaquero had a lot of influence over early cowboy gear, and the spur is no exception. There are two kinds of spurs, my friend. Those are coming by the door. Those are coming by the window. The very best horsemen in the world understood that a pair of spurs is little more than a signaling tool between horse and rider. The Carols became fine horsemen during the couple hundred year period between when the Spanish first introduced livestock to the area up until the Americans came along and started developing their own ranches. During that time, a horseback culture had evolved into a level never seen before. It was not uncommon for a vaquero to be at a level of horsemanship where he would show off by removing the bridle from his horse and performing difficult maneuvers using nothing more than body signals to guide his mount. It takes a highly trained animal to perform like this and a pair of spurs is one way signals are passed from rider to horse. So to an expert horseman, a pair of spurs is definitely a signaling tool. But on the other hand, a pair of spurs worn by the wrong rider can be used as an instrument of pain and can be a danger to both horse and rider. Unknowledgeable people look at a pair of spurs, especially those with large rowels, and imagine the worst. They don't realize that spurs, just like almost anything else, can be used for bad or good depending on the user and the application. For example, a butter knife can be used to butter your bread or to commit a murder. A car can be used to get your sick child to the doctor or can be used in a robbery. And spurs can be used to merely signal a horse or to harm one. It is how the instrument is used that matters and a pair of spurs to an experienced rider are useful tools, definitely not instruments of torture.
Today, there are numerous collectors from all parts of the world who collect spurs. For many, they are collectibles or even cowboy or cowgirl bling. Some spurs carry a pretty high price tag and they are collected right along with many forms of Western memorabilia. Among the most desirable spurs to an avid collector are antiques which have survived the test of time. If they were made by a well-known maker and are appealing visually, usually mounted with silver, they tend to be more valuable. However, modern day cowboys also collect spurs from contemporary makers. It is like a badge of honor to wear a fancy pair of spurs by a sought after spur maker. A pair of spurs by a well-known contemporary artist can often match or exceed the value of a pair by a famous maker from a hundred plus years ago. It really comes down to the taste of the collector or user. The collector's market remains very strong to this day for quality items and many spurs are put into collections where they will be on display and never see actual use again. You know, who would have thought that a tool used by horsemen for over 2,000 years would evolve into such a form of cowboy art? You know, collecting spurs can be a fun and interesting adventure. It sure can be, and there yeah. is so much to learn, and the history is very intriguing. Uh, New Jersey, Fort Lee. Hey, where are your spurs at? <laughs> we encourage you to give collecting spurs a try. And remember, if we can ever be of service, please feel free to reach out to us at westerntradingpost.com. If you would like to learn more about cool and unique items like this, sign up for our mailing list today at westerntradingpost.com.